And now to the vanquished on the final siren. There were incredible scenes of despair from GWS players, staff and, of course, coaches. Coming up well short, out of energy and, at this occasion, out of answers. It was an unfortunate finish in many ways, gentlemen, to a uh, very brave finals campaign. But what clearly seemed evident, they were just out of juice. Yeah, it looked like it, didn't it? I mean, yeah. I, I didn't see it coming. I uh, ran into a bloke before we went on here on the radio on Saturday and I, he was a Richmond man. He said to me, what do you think? I said, Richmond will win. Uh, he, he said, Richmond will win by 90 points. He told me that before the yeah. game. And I said, I said, there's no chance. He goes, well, if you, if you, if I get this right, which he didn't, he was one point off. You've got to mention on the couch tonight. <laughs> oh, you gave him an in. I say, I've given him a, a little mulligan on one point, but I didn't see it coming at all, boys. I'm a, but, and we're all fine in hindsight. We can all look back on and say they did look tired. But, but going into the game, yeah, I didn't see that coming at well, all. Well, the game was over at half time. Yeah. And yeah. I reckon there were five big moments. And we'll just uh, whip through them because post uh, half time, the game uh, yep. was really just an exercise in exhibitionism. Here's one a couple of handballs, putting blokes under pressure, overusing the ball, the time, and run down. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. though. Don't worry. They were in the game. Yeah, over the their games there. They're, they're, they're they're good, good, good previous 10 minutes, haven't they? Then there was this fumble from Perryman just prior to the siren. And everybody's fumbled, but these are the things yeah. that you can't do in grand finals. They go in with momentum. Straight after the final, uh, the end of the second quarter, you get this kickable goal. He played quite well, Himmelberg. And then the other end of the ground, poor free kick uh, from the captain, pushed him out. And then this one. In fact, uh, Razor Ray got involved. I mean, that is a throw, and yet it wasn't paid. So Razor uh, jumped on board as well. And then the same decision by Razor. He pays that one. It goes down. Tom Lynch kicks the goal. And effectively, that game is yep. over. Yeah, no doubt about it. To, to me... You know, they had that 10-minute patch the first quarter. You thought, oh, no, you know, they've been able to stabilise it. But, uh, yeah, from second quarter onwards, it was demolition. And you just have a look at what went wrong. So they're the strongest stoppage team in the competition, or certainly uh, one of the strongest. They're ranked number two. But they were absolutely destroyed. They only scored two points from stoppages. Yeah. And they were dismantled planning-wise uh, at the stoppages. So they really pulled apart. Uh, the Richmond pulled apart the GWS. But for me, I, and I had a really good vantage point. I sat behind the goals on about level three. And they just couldn't run. They were out of yeah. juice, you know. And, and GWS, normally a strong back-half scoring team, they had 67 opportunities where they started the ball from their back half and they scored four times. Mm. So GWS, they're back in their... They're deep in their back pocket there. Have a look at that. The players can't even run. Yes, Richmond set up beautifully. They covered the open side and protected it really well. But when it was time to gut run and get that first layer out to the open side to open up the corridor. Look at them. They just can't go at all. In the past, we've seen the Giants are the best. We've seen Giants players streaming out to that open field. Yeah, well, and one of the best gut runners at Whitfield. It clearly wasn't wasn't right. Um, Kelly didn't Kelly. find enough of it. Yeah. In fact, the way they the Richmond came out after the quarter time break, took away their incentive to run. They, they smashed them. Mm. They sm and I think co combined with the you know, the hard run they'd had coming into the finals and then they just one or, they, they tried once or twice, they turned the footy over and you could just see, Brownie, their, their want to do it became yeah. too much. And that was that was in the first half too, guys. Yeah. And you're right, second half was completely non well, that was after, Yeah, Well, I, d I thought after quarter time, the punch in the nose they gave him in the first three minutes of the second quarter. Um, and it was... Yeah, hindsight, as Rizzi talks about, it was a taxing 20 minutes that last final. Yeah. And they just yeah, took it. Yeah, yeah, it was. What's your thoughts on Phil Davis? Um, ultimately, he's probably going to make the call himself, but uh, a lot of people are interpreting it as almost a sign that they were in trouble, that they had this fitness test uh, so late in the day. Yeah, I'm surprised. And again, we were all talking here now and they've just lost by 90 points, but I hadn't seen this vision before. He doesn't look fit, no. does he? Talk when about you the psychology, at... Bruce. You, well, I think that's the thing for me. Your teammates is... are watching this and yeah. they don't know whether their captain's playing. Well, and this is the vision that Brownie cut up too. And, and this is not Phil Davis. Phil Davis doesn't get beaten on the lead. And, and again, we're talking here in hindsight. But for me, it's like you've got a week to get ready for the grand final. You want to prepare your team really well. You've got a couple of training sessions. Not as if it's a short break. It's not a six-day break or anything like that. Mm. I think you need to be training. You need to have ticked the box during the week. You need to have ticked the box on a Thursday saying, and even if it's just a short it's little a session, leg injury. Yeah. specifically with a leg injury, yeah. I think the look of actually doing a, a fit. Now, he is the captain and yeah, you can mount an argument for both. His record on Jack's been good, so yeah. I'm sure that ticked another yeah, box. Just talk about that briefly. You said, I was listening to you this morning on your radio show, Nick Rewalt was in. Yeah. 
just explain that. The record of, of, of Phil Davis on Jack Rowett. So obviously Jack's been talking to Nick and yeah. Jack would have been worried of, about a fit Phil yeah. Davis. Yeah, that's right. And whether that... Well, sure, it plays into it. You know, he, he's got a great record on, on, on um, Jack. But this is how it can work against you. And I don't know, and I don't know if anyone will admit to it, but if you're a player, you're looking at the pre 90 minutes away from the game, right? the grand final, you're looking and saying, you know what they say? They go, is Phil playing or not? I don't know, is Phil playing or not? Oh, jeez, I hope he is, you know. I oh, know he's playing. Jack kicks goal, one, two, three yeah. in a row, and they start looking at the I think the other thing, too, is Phil should be playing. On the back yeah. of Whitfield coming in, too, you know he's going to be underdone. On the back of the 20, the, the fact that they were really tired in the last 20 minutes, and Keith played a really good game last week. You know, it's not like they didn't have a replacement, but it is a tough one because he is the yeah. captain of the footy club, and it's, it's not an easy. It's not a, a, a black and white. But, but, but you you would definitely make the call the day before, Rosie, at the latest. Yeah, for a grand final, yes. Yeah, for a grand final. So yeah. clearly you only got an AM band. You haven't got an FM band to pick up well, your own station, Nova. But uh, let's take a look at where I they need on. to... I don't listen to myself. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I understand why, Brandon. Yeah. Uh, but, but let's have a look at their premiership profile because right throughout the year, they yeah. have been a side that scored from stoppages and not the front half. Yeah. And yet in the finals campaign, they spun that around and they were able to score from the front half. So here's a group that have... They're a long way down the track to winning a flag, but they've got to manufacture and orchestrate a slightly different style of play to get them there consistently in the front half to win one. Yeah, we've talked about that for a while, haven't we, particularly on this show. I mean, there's no question. And again, we're talking here after a 90-point loss, but we've said that. It's not a sustainable game mm. style. So you took away the stoppages, Brownie, you, you yeah. talked about before. They take away the stoppages. They couldn't create any turnovers themselves. So their DNA is still a back-half team, a stoppage team. So... They, they, they have to still address that in the off-season. They have to win the Territory game. They have to find another way to win because at this stage they haven't been able to win a premiership doing what they're doing. Big Mummy looks in trouble. Yeah. He was out of gas during September especially. Yeah, look, the big fella, you feel sorry for him because he came back and, you know, he, they didn't have really a ruckman. But, yeah, he was... He was really poor, and it made it really hard over the three weeks. He was giving everything he possibly could, but it's hard to go back-to-back-to-back-to-back to back to back to back to back four games when your Ruckman's getting towed up every single week. And playing against two genuine Ruckman. Yeah, you know, yeah. they, they did a great job. Dan Curvis, they went at it physically, and Soldo came in in the end, and he's Ruck working hard running after half-time. I mean... Mummy was 15, 20. That's a big, uh, that's a big uh, recruiting decision over, yeah. the, over the off season because Dawson Simpson retired. Do you so think Jacobs, Shane Mumford probably Jacobs retired? Signed. Sam Jacobs signed. Yeah, it's, it's one ruckman, isn't it? You yeah, just, yeah they it's might a little bit concerning. I think the whole balance of the sides is interesting. I mean, the, the Tigers have gone in with two forwards and two rucks. Uh, West Coast Eagles, they go in with three tall forwards and two rucks. Um, the Giants, they've got three medium sized forwards. And yet they're only going in with one ruck. And Tomlinson has been the second. So getting that balance right and, uh, I guess, apportioning value to hit-outs to advantage uh, is something that everybody grapples with mm. and has done for many, many decades. I, I think Dimmer made a good point, too. I mean, the Tigers have recruited specifically for that team. Giants are just different. So there's no one way to win. We saw West Coast winning mm. with that. Richmond's models changed also. Lynch came in. They had one, one tall forward two years ago. They only had one ruckman. So I, I think for the Giants, it's... Yeah, they've played particularly well this year with the three tools up forward. But the ruck is an issue, you know. And, and again, Mumford's been a warrior. They need to address it with Jacobs. Do they need an, another one? Mm. You know, who, who knows what they'll do. Liam Cameron's going to be on AFL tonight, tomorrow night at 5pm. Uh, how would he be sitting there and how would he be reviewing this year? It's a massive challenge, Browning, mm, because yeah. you've had your pants pulled down by 89 points. That does damage Jared. That damages a group. Cycle. Mm. I, I was in a grand final. We lost by 96. Yep. And it's a massive job balancing up between you know, pointing it out and reviewing it and saying, listen, this Did is... Did you it. address it straight away? Oh, mate, that, yeah. Can we, you remember? We, we, no one addressed it like they do today, but we I don't know if we did straight away. We, we bounced back and played finals for the yeah. next three years, so we got through OK, but... Right now, it's a balance between saying, listen, this is not good enough, this wasn't good enough, this, 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 but also...